Hi there folks, today I want to talk about the relationship between the PhD supervisor and the PhD student and specifically how this relationship changes through time. So ideally this relationship is a change from a teacher-mentor type relationship to a relationship among colleagues. This is the end goal and the ideal outcome, I would say. And how fast and if you achieve that goal of having this relationship be among colleagues depends on a number of factors. It depends, of course, on the prior experience of the PhD student. It depends on the personality of the advisor. Is this a more hands-on or a more, more hands-off advisor? Depends on the size of the lab. Depends a lot on the compatibility among the two personalities. And, of course, also on the speed and the pace of the progress the student makes throughout their program. Now, maybe the most important thing to realize is that really this is a progression. This is a development of a relationship that really takes place over the course of three, four years. So if you are, for example, new in a lab and you experience that that relationship between the advisor and the fellow PhD student is much closer and seems much more collegial than it is with you, for example, that is not reason for disappointment. Uh, because you're just at a different stage. So I think this is why it's important to realize that this is not something that um, develop, is present right, right off the bat, but it is something that really develops through time. And so I think that there's different stages. There's the beginning stage, there's sort of the intermediate stage, there's the later stage, and then there is um, the period of time after you have graduated. So let's look at each one of those a little bit. In the beginning, this is really the Phase where you receive input from your advisor. He or she is the mentor and you are the student receiving advice. This is also about building trust, like you know, how well are you working together as a team, for example. Typically, this is also the stage where you define your project much more clearly and again, that will depend a lot on the input from your advisor. So overall, more or less in this stage, the advisor acts as a teacher. In the middle stage, so maybe years two, two and a half or something of your PhD, there is a bit of a change because now the initial input phase has completed, uh, the topic has been defined, ideally you have obtained some results, you have maybe already written a chapter. So now the role of your advisor is maybe less that of a teacher, but more that of a provider of resources. Um, your research will typically use different resources in the lab, expendables, access to equipment or whatever it is, and your advisor will make sure that you have that access. Of course, your advisor continue, <laughs> continues to give you advice, and hence the name. And uh, also there is continued discussion, um, probably more at a higher level. This is more about um, how to write manuscripts, how to present your data, how to analyze your data. It's at a more advanced level. And this is the phase of consolidation of trust, where you earn an increasing amount of trust from your advisor and vice versa, where your relationship basically matures. So Overall, in that middle phase, the role of the advisor is the facilitator of the research of the student. Now, towards the end, things change again because the student has basically acquired a certain level of expertise that in the field of that PhD thesis will typically exceed that of the advisor's own expertise. So this means the student is becoming an expert in a certain topic. And this also means that now the advisor may actually seek input from the student. They may ask them about um, certain questions about details of the method and about details of experimental design and what the interpretation of, how the interpretation of certain data should proceed. This is also the time when students uh, take on greater responsibility. They take on greater independence. They also may take on um, undergraduate students that they advise or master students or even they may start mentoring beginning PhD students. So overall this is really when the, when the transition to the PhD student as a colleague is starting to happen. However, at the end of that phase there is still, depending on the country, the other function of the PhD advisor which is to serve as a reviewer of the thesis. So this is 
different from country to country, but in Germany, one of the reviewers is your PhD advisor, and this is also the person that chairs your defense committee. This is different in other countries, but this is also another role of your reviewer, basically, to catalyze the conclusion of your PhD and the award of your degree. At the end of that phase is the student shows mastery of the subject, to summarize it in one sentence. Now, this is the end of the PhD. However, in the ideal case, this is where the relationship between the mentor and the mentee doesn't end. After the PhD, depending on what kind of a position the student then has, as a postdoc or later on as a faculty member or a job in academia or in industry, they, they become colleagues in the truest sense. That doesn't mean that the PhD student, former PhD student, doesn't still ask for help. I think that that continues for quite a number of years. That is the same with my PhD students and that this is also what I experienced with my advisor as a PhD student. I still kept asking him for advice for, advice for, for many years following the graduation. If the student stays in academia, this really is an opportunity for collaborations and that has happened with me and my advisor and also with me and some of my uh, PhD students or postdocs. Also, when the PhD student uh, takes on a job outside of academia, for example, industry, publishing or other fields, then this becomes an opportunity to really reverse the flow of information because typically as a university professor, you, the advisor will not have much experience with that world outside of academia. Of course, with some exceptions, um, I don't include me in this exception, so I really don't know much about that. And then it is a really great opportunity to learn about these other careers and then to spread that knowledge among people in the lab. Also in each of these phases, and particularly towards the end and also after the PhD has finished, the role of the advisor is also to introduce the student into the professional network. And of course, that happens increasingly with um, the advance of the PhD thesis, but it can also happen also after the PhD. So I hope this gives you a bit of an overview of the change in this professional relationship and also it may help you put in context the particular phase at which you currently are in this particular relationship with your advisor, which is a very important one. And with that, thanks very much for listening. See you next time. Bye.